What's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Photo version 2 and in this video I'm going to quickly show you how we can make ourselves a quick mock-up using the mesh warp tool and a few images that we are going to be able to swap and change at the touch of a button. So if this is something that you would like to learn then let's go ahead and get started. So I've already created a page over here on the left hand side and I've done this as a quick mock-up just to demonstrate there's going to be two different ways that we can do this and why we're going to choose one way over the other. But if I just go over to the right hand side layers and I just turn off my left hand side page for the moment, you can see what I've got here is just a blank book. If you guys want to use the same project right here, I will put the link in the description for the image so you can download that. But moving on, I'll go ahead and just turn this layer back on for the moment. And we'll go ahead and get started with creating the content on the right hand side. So first thing that we need to do, and this is going to be a very important step, guys, when you come to bring your images into Affinity Photo. The way that you want to do this is by going up to File, go down to where it says Place, then just simply choose a photo that is on your desktop or your computer. And I'll choose that one right there and I'll just place that anywhere for the moment. So if I didn't use place to bring this image in and I just dragged this in from Google, for instance, I wouldn't be able to swap this image when I want to change it later on down the line. So that is the reason I use the place option. But we'll talk more about that in a little while. So what I want to do, first of all, is just resize this image to fit the page. So just about there, make that a little bit bigger on the top. Somewhere around there would be perfectly fine. Then what we need to do is go over to the right hand side layer panel. And we need to create a group for this image. So if we come down here towards the bottom where we have this folder and you just select group layer, then we can go ahead and grab that image and we're going to drop that inside of the group. And this step is going to be really important, which you're going to find out why later on in the video. So with our group selected, what we want to do next is we want to start to warp this into the position and the shape of the page. So to do that, we'll head over to the top left hand side to our layer option. We're going to make our way down to where it says new live filter layer. Inside of there, we're going to choose distort. And just down the bottom of there, we have the option called mesh warp. So once we select that, what we need to do next is grab either one of these four corners and we need to drag these into position. So first of all, I'll get this bottom one there. I'll select that and I'll just pull that over and try and find the rough edge of that page, so somewhere around there. And I'll do the same with the rest of these. This doesn't have to be perfect right away, we'll sort that out as we move on. So I put that roughly there, move this one over here, up to that corner, and do the same with the one at the bottom there. And at the moment this is kind of all over the place, but we're going to sort that out in just a moment and give that a straight edge. But all that's important for the moment is just trying to match up those four corners the best you can. This doesn't have to be perfect like I stated, this is non-destructive, we can always come back in and fine tune this. But just for now we'll get the general shape. So what I'm going to do is zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better and I'll do that with command or control plus to zoom in and command or control minus to zoom out. And I'm just going to come down here towards the bottom with this handle and I'm going to select this one right here. I'm going to start pulling this over. So what we need to do next is focus on the crease of this page so we can see that coming all the way down here. So what we want to do with this handle right here is just line that up with that crease, just like that. So you can see that is generally perfectly straight with that crease. Then we're going to go up towards the top and we're going to do the exact same thing on this other handle. So we'll go and select that and we'll make our way over pulling that towards the crease. And you'll find with this one, it may just sit on top of that line and that should be perfect. So somewhere around there would be perfectly fine. And this really would be a lot more helpful if we could drop the opacity to see this a little bit better. However, if we're going to drop the opacity, we're going to have this problem where we can see the other layer underneath it. So that isn't really an option, unfortunately. So we're going to have to try and make it work the way it is. But if we just zoom back out with Command or Control Zero to fit to screen, I'll come a little bit closer for you guys. You can see that line looks pretty straight the way it is, but we can go in there and just adjust that if you need to slightly. So with that side done, we'll make our way over to the right hand side and we're going to do the same over here. So we'll select that one at the bottom. We're going to zoom in again so you guys can see this a little bit better. And once again, just going to drag this point and use that straight edge just to line that up with the edge of the paper. It was somewhere roughly around there. And we'll do the same with the top one. So we'll grab that one and we'll pull that in itself and just find the edge of that. Like I said, usually if you line that up perfectly with the mesh warp itself, just like that, where we have that straight line, that should be good enough. However, you may just have to come in there and adjust it slightly. 
So maybe just pull that bit in a little bit. But like I stated, this is non-destructive. We can come back at any time and find adjust all of this. So don't worry about getting it perfect right away. So what we're going to do now is bend the bottom corner over here on the left hand side. So we're going to use this point right here. So we're going to start pulling this up and then over towards the left. And we're going to find the shape of the page. So if we pull that all the way up and then we just bring it back down, just try and adjust that the best you can to fit that page. So something like that doesn't look too bad. We may need to adjust it a little bit later on, but it's fine for now. And the same just over here, just make sure that lines up nicely. So bring that down and roughly around there. Then we'll go and focus on the top. So make our way up there. We're going to grab this side as well. So select that node right there. And we just start pulling this up and over, following that same kind of curve that we got. So it's roughly around there will be perfectly fine for now. And just find adjust that side as well. And I can see there, it's just a little bit out of place. So I'll pull that over a little bit. And that should do for the quick demonstration. So I'm not going to make it perfect because you guys can spend a bit more time on this if you want to get it a little bit better than what I've done. But for a quick demonstration, this will be fine. So I'll zoom back out a little bit and I'll just go ahead and I'll hit done up here on the left hand side so we can come off the warp tool. Then what we need to do next, if I just zoom back in and over on this left hand side over here, if I go ahead and turn off this other image that I've put on there and I zoom in a bit closer, you guys can now see over here, we have this kind of grain effect, almost like that paper look. And we have a few highlights and shadows on here. And what we want to be able to do is mimic that onto this page over here. So it looks a little bit more authentic and it looks as though it's part of the book. So the way we're going to do that is all we've got to do is change the blend mode. So if we make our way over to the right hand side layer panel and up here where we have normal, we are just going to change this normal blend mode over to multiply. However, before we do that, we just want to double check that we are on the group itself. So make sure you've got your group layer selected or it may cause problems with whatever else you had that on. So with the group layer selected, we're going to now change this from pass through over to multiply. And straight away, you can see that the image got a little bit darker. So if we just zoom in, we can now see that we have the same texture over here from the original page. And it also shows us our highlights and shadows in various places. And changing that blend mode is what's going to give you that authentic look if we just zoom out a little bit so you guys can see that a lot better. So just to quickly demonstrate the differences, this is now a multiply, so it looks as though it's part of the book. If we go ahead and put that back to normal, you can see it's got a lot brighter and it kind of looks out of place. So we'll go ahead and put that back to multiply. Okay, so what I now urge you guys to do is go ahead and save your project file as we've now completed all of the hard work. And you may want to come back later on down the line and change some of these images. So in order to quickly save that, just make your way up to the top left hand side toolbar menu to file. Go down to save as. You can name that anything that you like. Just make sure that you do save that as an Affinity Photo file and not a JPEG as you want it to remain editable. So with that out of the way, I am now going to show you how we can quickly change these images and not have to do any further editing. It will automatically follow the same lines that we've already created. And to do that, if we just make our way back over to the right hand side layers. And first of all, I want to select the one on the left hand side as I'm now going to show you the two differences with this and why you're definitely going to choose one over the other. So with the left hand side selected, I'm going to make my way over to the left hand side toolbar menu. I'm going to select the move tool. And with the move tool selected, you now see that we have this option available on the top menu bar that says replace image. So if we go ahead and we just select that and we go and choose a different image to put inside of here. So maybe just that one right there. You can see how quick and easy that was to swap that image around. And all we've got to do here is just change that blend mode once again. So back over to the right hand side, choose from normal to multiply. Then that will look a bit more authentic if I just deselect that real quick. And you can keep going back and swapping this image as many times as you like with anything that you like. It's entirely up to you. So you may have noticed that all of the images that I imported over onto the left hand side were all portrait images. So they did fit the pages rather well. However, this does become an issue when you start to bring in smaller images, which I will quickly demonstrate. So if I go back up to where it says replace image, and I'm just going to choose a square image right here. So with that imported, we can see straight away that we've got an issue with the fact that it's only half the size of the page itself. And what's going to happen now if we try stretching this out to fit the page, I'll go ahead and pull that down and just pull that over. 
We can see that it's now come outside of the page and it doesn't look the way that it should. And unfortunately, the only way that we can go ahead and fix this is to double tap back inside of our warp and our layers and just start adjusting all your handles again to get that back into the original position. And obviously that is not what we want to do. So I'll go ahead and hit done quick just to come back out of that. Then I'll just hit command or control Z just to undo and go back to my original image. So that issue right there was a whole reason why I created a group for the other image on the right hand side as the warp that we applied to the group does not affect what is inside of that. So if we make our way back over to the right hand side and if we just double tap on our warp for our group, we can see that we've got the line that goes all the way around the page. And as I stated, the warp is affecting the group folder and not the contents inside of that. So if I go inside of here using the drop down menu, I choose that image and I go ahead and I swap this image as well, making sure that I choose the move tool because if we don't, we're not going to have the option to replace the image. So I'll go ahead and choose that move tool. Then we have the replace image button appear. So I'll go ahead and select that. I'm going to choose that exact same image, that square right there. And we can see we've got the same problem where it doesn't quite fit the page. But this time round with the image selected, if we go ahead and we start to stretch it out, it's going to stay exactly inside of the page. It's going to follow the exact same pattern that we created. And you can see just how easy that really was with a mesh warp applied to the group and not the image. So just like before, we can just keep going back now and swapping these images as much as you like. Maybe go back to the original one or just simply change that to be anything that you like. It's entirely up to you. And if you want to move the content around inside of there, just simply start adjusting the handles to move that down. And maybe over a little bit, get closer to the edge of the page just to give it more of a full page look. So there is that now complete. And of course, like I stated, this is always non-destructive. If you want to go back in and change anything or get closer to the edges, just simply go back into your mesh warp group. Then just grab any of your handles and just start fine tuning that however you like to get closer to the edge. And another thing that you can actually do is apply multiple images or elements inside of this folder and they will follow the exact same line. So if I go back up to file, go down to place and find myself another image, just to be quick, I'll choose that square once again. I'll place that right there and I'll just resize that a little bit. And you can bring in as many images or elements as you like. Then over in the right hand side layer panel, if we just drop this now inside of our group above our other photo, you can now see that it's followed the exact same lines that we've already created. And we can go ahead and resize that, make it smaller or bigger. It's up to you. Move that anywhere you like. And like I stated, you can bring in as many different photos as you like and generally build a page within the page. So that is another great reason why you want to be using the group rather than a single image. However, I'm going to leave this the way it is as I've now finished the video. So I hope you guys did find today's video useful. If you did, then please give me a thumbs up as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with all my future releases. And if any of you guys would like to help support my channel, then you can buy me a coffee in the link in the description. That just really helps me find a little bit more spare time to create new content for you guys. And I really appreciate all of you guys that have already bought me a coffee as well as gave me a super thanks. Also, if any of you guys want to check out my Etsy store where I've created a few products for sale, then you will also find the link for that in the description. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in my next video.